So tell me if this has ever happened to you. Severe weather is headed your way, so you decided to download the latest, greatest radar app on your iPhone. But then you're like, wait, how do I use it? Oh, hey guys. See you in there. Well, I'm Edgar the Storm Chaser, and today I'm gonna show you the basics of using one of the most popular radar apps on the App Store, RadarScope. So, hmm, who is this video for? Well, this video is for anyone that's interested in storm chasing, storm spotting, or maybe you just wanna be a little bit more weather aware when severe weather is heading towards your area. But let me be clear, this video requires zero experience in reading radar. You may have just downloaded the app for the first time, or maybe you haven't even downloaded it yet and you're like, I don't wanna pay for an app until I actually know how to use it. But even if you already know a little something about radar, you'll probably get something out of this because while I was doing my research to make this video, I actually learned a few things. By the end of this video, you should have a basic understanding of how radar works, what radar scope looks like, what tools are available, how to track storms within the app, and how to go through all the features. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get into this video. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get into some radar basics. The simplest way to explain radar is that it sends out electromagnetic waves that bounce off things called scatterers. Scatterers can be things like smoke, birds, even bugs, but most commonly, rain and hail. These electromagnetic waves represented by the red wavelengths are sent from the radar towards the storm. Once these wavelengths encounter some form of precipitation, they bounce off and head back towards the radar, represented by the green wavelengths. And then, boom, a radar image is made. <laughs> well, not exactly, but that's all you'll need to know for this video. Radars are constantly working at scanning and sending signals back of storms like this, so that we can get images of those storms that look like this. And now that we have a basic understanding of radar, let's check out the layout of radar scope. I want to let everyone know, first and foremost, this is not a paid video. RadarScope just happens to be the app I like to use most when I'm out storm chasing. It has a simplistic design and it's really easy to use. First, let's get acquainted with the screen. At the top in the center, you'll see where it says Oklahoma City. That's the current radar that I have selected. Up in the top left-hand corner, that is the toolbar that has the draw tool, the distance tool, and the inspector tool. But we'll get more into those in a little bit. I want to start first by going over what's at the bottom of the screen. First, let's go to your location on the bottom left. When you press this button, it's going to bring up a little blue circle, and that's showing your location at the current moment. It also selects the radar site that is closest to you. This is most useful for knowing where you are in relation to the storm that you're looking at. The button next to it that looks like a bullseye is your radar selection tool. When you press this button, it basically shows all the possible radar sites that you could select. Let me zoom out just so you can see how many radar sites there are. All you have to do to select a new radar site is just press with your finger whatever radar site that you see. Click here, click there, click here. It's important to note that while that radar button is selected, you won't be able to see the cities. You'll have to unselect it so that you can see all the cities. This really helps when knowing where you're at in relation to the storm. Next, let's look at some storm animations. There was no storms where I was at, so I had to click over on Australia. So let's go ahead and click that play button and see what the animation looks like. This basically puts the storm in motion for a period of time that you can see in the bottom right hand corner. The button just to the right is the dual pane button. This allows you to look at two radar modes at once, such as reflectivity and velocity. I'm not going to get into that feature for this video because it is only available with the pro version of the app. And the next two buttons to the right are the share button and the settings button. Now let's head back over to the US of A so that I can show you the toolbar at the top left of the screen. If you press on this toolbar, it expands to show all three tools, the draw tool, the distance tool, and the inspector tool. Since the draw tool is first, let's start with it. And this one is simple, it does exactly what you think it would do. You click on it and you can draw. This is most useful to highlight an area of a storm on radar and screenshot it and send it to your buddy. If you press the tool again, it erases whatever you've drawn on the radar. Next, we have one of the most useful tools on the app and that is the distance tool. Once you have selected this tool, you press on the screen wherever you'd like to start the distance from and drag out and it creates a distance and radius. This tool is super useful for seeing how far away those scary storms are from you. Once you become more experienced at using the radar, you can use this for a number of things for seeing how far away you are from a possible tornado couplet, or maybe you just want to see if you can get the groceries in before the rain starts. 
The next tool to the right is the inspector tool. This tool is only available with the pro mode as well, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But basically, you can use it to detect things like wind speed and scatter size. Next, let's click on the settings button on the bottom right hand side so that we can take a look at the layers. This is used to customize your radar layout. You can turn things off and on like warnings, watches, city streets, even storm reports and storm tracks. I wanna pay special attention to the warnings layer because this is where you can turn on tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, flash flood, even special marine and snow warnings. So now that we've gotten used to the layout of radar scope, let's look at some of the most commonly used radar modes and how they'll be useful for you to use in everyday life. To do this, let's look at some live radar images from my stream on December 10th, 2021, the day of the infamous Quad State Tornado. First, let's click above location where it says Super Res Reflectivity. This is where you'll press anytime you want to change the radar mode. For this video, we're going to go over Super Res Reflectivity, Super Res Velocity, and the Correlation Coefficient. Let's start with Reflectivity. And as I said before, we're going to be using a live stream that I used in the past. I was using the desktop version of Radar Scope, but it'll translate fine for what we're going over in this part of the video. Reflectivity is just what it sounds like. It's the radar waves reflecting off of the rain and hail in a storm. So basically, the stronger the reflectivity, the stronger the rain or hail in the storm. This is interpreted by a range of color on radar. Light green is the lightest, up to dark purple, which is the heaviest. So on the ground, light green would be like a light sprinkle, yellow would be just some rain coming down, red, heavier rain, dark red, really heavy rain, and when it starts getting purple and pink, that's a sign of a hail signature. The most common uses of this mode is to see the intensity of the precipitation and evaluate storm structure and to determine if there is hail with the storm. The next most commonly used radar mode is velocity. Velocity is measuring the speed of particles moving away and towards the radar. Red is indicating that things are moving away from the radar. Green is indicating that they are moving towards the radar. So it's really important to understand the relation of the storm to the radar that you're currently using. This mode is most commonly used to determine the direction and speed of the wind. It is also used to locate severe weather signatures within a storm. The last and final mode we're gonna look at today is correlation coefficient. This is used to detect different sizes of particles being reflected to the radar site. But to make it simple, this shows debris. You will also hear this referred to as a CC drop. This is commonly used to show a tornado debris signature on a storm. The storm you're currently looking at has one of those debris signatures that's currently circled. Now that we've covered some basic radar modes, let's check out warning boxes. As you can see on the screen here, there's several warning boxes. Some are red and some are yellow. Yellow indicates severe weather warnings and red indicates tornado warnings. There are also green boxes that indicate flash flood warnings. There are orange boxes that indicate special marine warnings. And there are also light blue boxes that indicate snow squalls. The last thing we're going to cover today is storm tracks. Those are indicated by the white lines that start in the core of the storm and then have dashes as they proceed out. The white line is the projected path of the storm, and each dash equals 15 minutes in time. So each dash means 15 minutes to that point. So that concludes our video on radar scope basics. Please let me know what other topics you'd like to hear about. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video, and until next time, I'll see you in heaven.